You have a detailed and a summary report. Let's open up the summary report. So then we'll change the date up top from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it to refresh it. And there we have it. So this report will be more complex if you sell inventory items, because then you have to deal with the cost of goods sold and whatnot. But we're really kind of looking at just the sales line item. You, you, all, you could kind of concentrate on the cost of goods sold area, but I'm really kind of tying it in to the sales line item at this time. So this is going to be the amount and you can break it out by the things that we sell. So design, we've got these in, in groups or categories, uh, the fountains, and then we've got the groups in there. If I go to the first tab, by the way, just to see how this is created and we go into the sales tab on the left and you go into the products and services, these are the products and services that we have set up. And you can see some of them have been put into these categories or groups. So that's where the categories or groupings are showing up in our reports. Back to the reports. And if I go to the bottom line here, this total 102805 breaking out our sales by the line items by the service and inventory items we sell should tie out then to the total income, which would be here. Now note it's a little off because as we discussed last time, the the income doesn't force us to to be in balance with the subledger as the system typically does with say accounts receivable. So with accounts receivable, if I go to the balance sheet, that accounts receivable has a subledger breaking out by customer. QuickBooks kind of forces it to be in balance for the most part by not allowing us to enter something to the receivable account that it can't record to the subledger for a customer which is usually good, but it does cause some problems. There's pros and cons to that. They don't do that for the income account. So it is possible, say for example, to enter a deposit form that doesn't have an item at all. And then it still goes to the income account. That means you're gonna record income that it can't tie out to the item. So, so it's gonna be off by that amount. However, if you're recording all of your income with invoices and sales receipts, then the subledger should properly tie out. And if it doesn't, it's not as big as a problem as a balance sheet account like accounts receivable because accounts receivable is a permanent account. So you'll have that problem going forward until you fix it. The income statement accounts are temporary. They close out. In other words, at the end of the year, you start over. So when you start over, you can you can basically get back in balance if, you're, if you've adjusted your accounting system to be using the sales receipts and the the invoices so there are those if i if i go back on over you can imagine this would be a nice chart as well to kind of make a pie chart out of for example to graph the sales that we're making or the amount of sales by item and we might uh, test that out in a future presentation it also gives you the quantity here of the sales if we're selling the inventory items so we can kind of think about it in terms of quantity as well it gives us the percentage of sales that's basically taking for example a vertical analysis kind of calculation just to check it out so we can see what is going on with it what's going on this is going to be the 2670.25 divided by and scrolling down divided by the 10280.05 Moving the decimal two places uh, to the right, we get to that 25.98 about. And then we've got the average price. So let's look at this average price for the rock fountain. For example, all we're doing to calculate that is taking this 2475 sales price divided by nine. And that's where we're getting this average price of 275. That price is gonna be the sales price, average sales price, not like the cost. We're not talking about flow assumptions, weighted average, FIFO, LIFO. This is the average price. The reason they take the average price here is because of course, we could have changed the sales price at some point during the year. So we have the average. This is the cost of goods sold in total. So if this is the total sales we had on the fountains, the 2475 minus the cost of those fountains minus the 375, that gives us our gross margin. In essence, the impact on the bottom line net income or gross profit. And if I take that gross profit for these particular fountains for this period and divide it by the sales price, the 2475, that gives us our, our gross margin percent. 
uh, and that percent basically we're making 84.85 cents on every dollar sale we make on the rock fountains uh, you can see the other side of that if i subtract that minus one that means there's 15 15 cents about is going to or 15 percent of it is going to then the cost of the fountains which you may actually also get to by going to the 375 cost divided by the amount of sales to 475 and there's your 15 percent in essence so that's the general 